Hey guys and welcome. This is my first kind of video of uh, the projects that I've been working on, so bear with me. Quality is going to be crappy. Audio will be even worse, but I'll try to explain as I'm going through here so you get the idea. This box that I'm squaring up now is basically going to hold the idler sprocket. It's a four inch sprocket where the chain will ride over top at the very tip of the boom. There'll be a three-quarter inch threaded rod that will be welded to that box and you'll be able to tighten it uh, to tension the chain or to loosen the chain off uh, to make adjustments as needed. As you'll see, the uh, heat on the welds kept sucking the pieces together, and I wasn't able to keep it square, so I used some wood there to jam it together um, as I finished the weld to keep everything square. Because this box rides between the two C-channels, um, the four holes on each side that hold the bearing had to be threaded. Um, you couldn't put a bolt through because they would catch. And I just plan on using uh, either three-quarter or one-inch bolts with a couple of washers there. This is all just uh, test fitting everything. Quick little tack weld on the sprocket and the sheave just to put it in place. Um, I don't show it, but I come back later once I know that sprocket I was using and uh, full weld around the sheave. Because I really don't know what I'm doing here, I bought um, nine teeth sprockets all the way up to 15 teeth sprockets um, the motor comes in 4,881 inch pounds of torque and I needed to gear that up for speed because it's a 16 gallons per minute uh, flow rate my tractor only runs about nine gallons a minute and I have three eight lines so that's the max is uh, nine gallons on three eights anyway so I knew my flow would be half as fast. So in order to get the speed on the actual motor and the power that I needed, I had to sprocket it up. So I chose uh, a couple different ones and I tested it. And I liked the four inch sprocket because it gave me 1.7 feet per second at full RPM on the tractor and still gave me 1200 uh, inch pounds of torque. And I planned on having about a 900 pound weight if possible so that gave me about 300 pounds leeway uh, for friction on the chain and the sprockets and any other uh, things I might run into. So here's just the test fit on the, I guess, idle sprocket you'd call it. So I picked up this uh, three valve spool from Princess Auto and basically everything for this project was from Princess Auto. This is a BM40 series spool nine gallons a minute maximum it's uh, I believe 10 ORB fittings on the in and out and power beyond and eight ORB fittings on the three spools for control it would have been nice to put uh, a 10 ORB for one control 
uh, for the motor but it didn't really matter again because the maximum flow that I'm limited to is nine gallons a minute with the three-eighths lines that I have so so here I'm making all the collars for the mounts on the three-point hitch and the top link as well as the adjustable three-point hitch uh, I guess the one side so I had to make uh, six of these in total the sander you see there is a 2 by 72 sander that uh, I made based off a design from Jeremy I forget his name I'll put a link in the this information below but he did a really good uh, how to make a 72 by 2 inch adjustable grinder and that thing is paid for itself several times over so here I'm making a box that will slide along the left hand side of the three-point hitch frame I guess you could call it and that'll allow a hydraulic cylinder to be mounted and we'll twist the post hole or post pounder um, on the x-axis the top link on the y I had some trouble getting the shims the right thickness and being able to have it slide freely so that's why I had to cut it apart and redo it Here I'm just drilling a hole and threading in uh, threads for a grease nipple that I'll put on later on. Now that everything fits properly, I'll finish welding all the seams in the corners, sand it and clean it up. So here's the first time plugging everything in, just making sure everything does what it needs to do. So the motor runs the chain in both directions. And then I've got the tilt left or right on the hydraulics. Also the hydraulics are up and down with the three point hitch. And then you'll see the top link as well. Will give me the back and forward, so towards the tractor and away from the tractor. Sometimes my daughter likes to join me in the garage when I'm building stuff. I built her a little swing hanging from the ceiling. So this next scene, you're going to hear her in the background. And I just didn't have the heart to mute the scene. So enjoy. Watching. Did. It's pretty crazy. No, watch it. She's over on the, the uh, bench over there, in the chair. Yeah. Is that where you left her?
pink? Yeah. Uh, is it pink blanky? Yeah. No. Okay, what is it? I'm a baby because it's somewhere outside. Outside? Hmm. Yeah. See that, honey? So here I'm just tack welding a back plate. It's just to guard the chain and to ensure when it's lifting the weight that it doesn't swing out if the chain's too loose and allow the weight to free fall. And this is just cutting gussets out of the three-quarter plate. All that three-quarter plate will be used to make the box that will hold all of the steel for the hammer. So these will be the guide pieces that I'll weld on. There'll be four for both the weight and four for the guide plate, eight in total, and they'll ensure that all of the components track along the beam. So I actually screwed the design up here a couple of times uh, and I had to change it. The block that lifts the deadweight hammer um, screws out or protrudes out about an inch from the chain and it would catch the guide. So I had to cut out a section of the guide plate that rests on the top of the cedar post so that it wouldn't catch it and snag it. Um, which had me completely redesign the gussets because this gusset here has to take all of the force should there be no post so if you were setting it down uh, after you were done using it and something terrible happened and it uh, free fell down 75,000 uh, newton meters would uh, fall on this plate so it has to be extremely beefy you could say So this is cutting a bunch more of those guide blocks. These ones will be mounted to the box that will hold the weight that I've been calling the hammer. So now that the guide plate is complete, um, be mounting it to the frame using those guides and welding them on. So the guide's now complete and you'll see the actual hammer constructed the same way. And then 
sent some photos of me kind of trying to get it together and the very difficult part of getting it out of the garage which was too tall for the ceiling and then putting the hammer in place on the slide which was a nightmare i threw this in here just uh was too amped and excited to try it out and it's not springtime so the bark doesn't come off too easy from the cedar but you can always pressure wash it it takes about four minutes to log it's messy but it does the job quite well actually and with minimal effort and then uh, the test pound so right here the weight of the hammer is about 440 pounds final weight of the completed project is 840 pounds but I don't have a video because I got too excited and did all the fencing in one day. It actually took about uh, an hour to do, I think it was 12 posts, and I was figuring it out. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so here's the final product. The new weight of the hammer is now 840 pounds, and it's sealed up with the rest of the scrap steel and some sand just to fill in the cracks. The safety chains were added so that it can't go up to the automatic trip for safety so that when you put the post in, it's not gonna fall down. If you accidentally went too high or bumped the machine. And then you'll see right here, I added a little chain clip that wraps around the top of the post and that keeps the post nice and tight so I can control it if it hits a rock um, and it won't fall off. The video is sped up twice the speed so technically it's uh, about three minutes per post to pound the post in the ground pending no issues so far uh, at this point I've done 15 posts and uh, knock on wood no issues no major rocks you can tell when you hit a rock it does slow down a bit but if you just keep going either moves the rock out of the way or deflects a bit and uh, is able to pass through so so far super excited everything worked out perfect and uh really happy with the end product thanks for watching and if you have any questions leave a comment